Hi, my name is Mike Abe, and welcome to my KSP campaign. At the conclusion of the last episode, we had just gotten the Kegel 3 down to the surface of Minmus, and Shalkal finished off the episode by investigating the nearby monolith. So right now he's just being joined by our pilot Stala, and we're going to go through the requisite flag planting ceremony. Also gets us a little bit of experience, of course, as well. And while these folks are doing that, why don't we talk about what else is coming up in this episode? I mean, we'll be finishing off our Mimis mission here, of course, but also we'll be launching the crew of our Kermes to our Eve Explorer. But right now, while well, we do have a few more things still to do here on the surface of Minmus, starting with uh, getting ourselves a little bit more science. We did collect some science with the science equipment that we had. Unfortunately, we are in the slope, so, and Bob in a previous Minmus mission had already collected a lot of science, but there's still some stuff here for Shell Cal to get. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Got a little bit of a, a physics kick in the pants. Come on, gotta get control of them. There we go. All right. And I did eventually get Shell Cal safely into the lander. And then I want to take a look to see if there was any other science that I can collect here. And according to this ScanSat mini-map, I do have a nearby set of Highlands and Midlands, both that are within easy EVA distance. And I know Bob has already been to both of those before, but, you know, they're easy to get to, so I might as well make my way out that way. Unfortunately, I just don't have the fuel in the lander for a hop. That would be what would be more ideal. But again, uh, you know, we're just here with the resources. This is actually being entire. This whole mission, the fuel for this mission, is just being provided by some extra fuel that the uh, Korean One, the ship that brought these folks out to Minmus, just happened to have. So uh, this was never sort of part of the design this is just taking advantage of the resources that I have so I'll have to just be able to do what it is that I can do but being able to do some suborbital hops definitely for next time we'll get a lander out here and do some hops in the future for sure the other thing that's unfortunate too is that I don't have an engineer along uh, if I had an engineer along they could remove science parts from the lander bring those science parts out to uh, these other biomes especially the gravity detector the grav max detector uh, because I've this is the first time I've had that down on Mimis's surface. That certainly would have collected some science, but unfortunately that's just not going to be in the cards. We'll just have to work with what we have. But it was when I was on my way over to the Midlands that I noticed a little bit of a different color down here on the mini map. This here is a little patch of greater flats. That is certainly as well with an easy EVA distance, and Bob never did get to any greater flats. So uh, that is certainly a bit of a bonus. So once Shao Kao uh, performed his EVA report and surface sample here in the Midlands, and then returned back to the Kegel 3 and deposited the science that he had, I headed off towards the greater to flats. Now, you know, he is a little bit short on propellant, um, and I, I actually did that a little bit intentionally. I, I know I could have just gone into the lander and magically his, uh, his EVA pack would have been fueled back up with propellant again, but I thought, you know, I got these KIS uh, propellant canisters these extra canisters that you can carry around a shell call. I gave him one, and I thought, you know, it might be fun just to use. I've never used this before. Um, so I thought it would be fun to sort of give this thing a go. Oh, and we are now in the greater flats. I'll try and put him down a little bit more gently <laughs> than what you saw a little while ago in the highlands. There we go. Okay, so let's get the science out of the way first. So EVA report. Boom. Surface sample. Boom. There we go. Okay, that, that, that feels a little bit more worthwhile. Now, he clearly doesn't have the propellant to get home, so we'll open up his inventory, and in there you can see the spare canister. Should I hit refuel? What happens if I just... Why don't I try hitting equip first? Oh, there it is. You can see it on him. Can Oh, right-clicking, right you can't see the fuel. Okay, I guess just refuel. Neat, there it goes. It's all fueled up. I wonder how much fuel is in this thing. 
Um, okay, let's let's unequip it here. And let's look. Oh, there it is. It's over there on the other side. I have 5.49 of 10 units of fuel left. Oh, that makes sense. The the EVA pack holds five, so this can fill the pack twice, or yeah, or give have enough fuel for two purples to fill it up. Very cool. That's nice. Uh, the textures here. I don't like how the facial texture animation is really still rather messed up. You've probably been seeing that a lot the last few episodes. I'm hoping to go to 1.2 soon and uh, maybe that'll get cleared up. I don't know. But uh, I'm still in 1.13, waiting still on some key mods. The key one actually being Kerbal Construction Time. It actually seems to be... Whatever it is in 1.2 seems to have presented Kerbal Construction Time with a particular challenge. But anyway, we got Shell Cal back to the Kegel 3, and uh, that was pretty much it of what I was going to be doing on the surface of Minmus. So it was time for us to get off of the surface. And then we'll just cut here to our orbital insertion, and you can see that... Uh, I spent maybe a little bit too much time on the surface of Minmus, and uh, our orbits aren't quite lined up here. we got to get back up there to the station. So uh, we'll have to do a little bit of finagling here to get us our rendezvous. So what I decided to do was just at one of the nodes just push up my apoapsis until it reached an altitude that was the same as the station. And then at that location I was going for both my inclination change and playing a little bit with the prograde retrograde direction, actually a little bit of retrograde, to uh, get my encounter to happen at that location as well. So I'm doing both the rendezvous burn and the inclination change at the same time. Uh, you know, it might, might have been, though more time consuming, it would have been probably cheaper to push my apoapsis way out and then do my inclination change like you've seen me do before, but I don't know, I don't want these people hanging around in the capsule. I th I'm pretty sure I can afford it here, but with that rendezvous taken care of, it wasn't going to happen for a little bit just yet, so it was time to get ourselves back to Kerbin. And here we have the launch of the Dream Chaser, and aboard we have the crew for our Kermes 2, whose next destination is going to be, hopefully, Eve. And our crew is going to be, we have our two scientists here, Luya and our newest Kerbinot, Diltop. Our engineer on his way to Eve is going to be Chrisnik. And our pilot, that's not going to be Gilly, whom you see there. It's actually, Gilly's just flying the Dream Chaser, and then she's going to be bringing the ship back after it docks. It's actually Tamley. Let me, uh, let me show you Tamley here, because Tamley has a bit of an issue. She has zero experience. Her experience has disappeared. Actually, no, she has one out of two experience, if you take a look. Um, yeah, that was... That was something that happened a little while ago. It actually happened while I was testing the uh, Otter X-1, which is now in the space plane hangars building queue, getting built, and it's going to be my single stage to orbit space plane. Um, and while I was testing it, using Kerbal Construction Time simulation mode, of course, you're going to get the odd crash. That's what testing is all about. And while I was in the process of testing it, uh, well, I had a power failure. Not in the plane, in my house. Yeah, <laughs> the power went out and my computer, of course, just turned right off. And uh, I had a bit of a revert issue. Um, it ended up saving the game thinking, took me a while to figure this out, thinking that Tamley had died. Somehow, though, um, the game itself didn't think that she died, but it wouldn't count any experience before she died. I know it's weird. Uh, the same thing actually happened to Valentina, who was in the uh, co-pilot seat along with Tamley when that happened. And uh, I had to get into the save files and did a little bit digging around. Found out that uh, somehow the game thinks that they are dead, though they're not dead. Whatever. I got it fixed. So the next time you do see Tamley after this video, as well as Valentina, they will be back to their two star levels once again. And speaking of the Otter X-1, actually, this uh, is a bit of a bittersweet moment. This might be the last of our Dream Chasers. Yeah, as much as I do love this little plane, and there still are two more of them in orbit docked with Kerbin Station, 
you know, with the X1, which you saw a couple of episodes ago while I was testing it, uh, you know, it functions, it performs the exact same function as this, and it's a single staged orbit. It's hard to justify kind of keeping the dream chaser around. Yeah, I think it is being uh, supplanted <laughs> by superior technology. Anyway, we will get this thing docked nonetheless. And uh, once we did get this thing docked, I would need to get Gilly to bring the Dream Chaser back down. And then these folks are going to have to sit up here and wait for the final module, the propulsion module for their vessel in order to send them off towards Eve. But before I could take care of any of that, well, my attention was drawn back to Minmus. Where the Kegel 3 was arriving back at Minmus Station with a total of 21 meters per second of delta v left yeah when i said that i had uh, plenty of fuel i really wasn't thinking about those inclination changes i had to make but regardless we got them there and even if we didn't get them there i mean the Korean one could have easily gone and rescued them got them back to the station there are plenty of supplies plenty of stacks there's enough there for the kerbals to last for months so there really was never any danger to the kerbals with all of this and speaking of the Korion, the Korion does have the fuel to get back to Kerbin Station in low Kerbin orbit, but no more fuel left to do any other kind of missions in and around Minmus. Um, but I do have a Kegel 6 in the building queue that is slotted to be launched as soon as I get the Moho and Eve windows that I have coming up out of the way, the vessels that I have planned for that. So that's going to be the next vessel that's going to be a Kerbin system type of vessel, and it has uh, a science lab, and it's got all the science equipment, and it'll have enough fuel to do uh, at least a few suborbital hops and get to different biomes in and around Mimis. It's going to be a nice little science magnet for me. Um, so what I think I'll do is I think I'll just keep these folks here. They can hang out. They they they're comfortable where they are, and they can wait for the uh, the Kegel Six to be built and to get sent out to Minmus, and then we'll do some really good Minmus exploring. But uh, with this accomplished, I think it was time for us to get back to the Kermes Two and the Dream Chaser, where now that the crew for our Eve mission is safely aboard the partially completed Kermes 2, it's time for Gilly to get the Dream Chaser back down to Kerbin's surface. Now, uh, one of the issues that we have here is that we are in an inclined orbit, and during the time while we are docked with the Kermes, um, of course, Kerbin has rotated, and now our trajectory is coming to the south of the Kerbal Space Center. Now, the Dream Chaser doesn't have the fuel to make a low orbit inclination change like this. So what I'm doing is I'm just burning retrograde normally. And I'm just looking at the X that Trajectories is giving to me, the little red cross. There we are. We are south now of the Kerbal Space Center. And then the idea is going to be that as I enter into the atmosphere, I'm going to use aerodynamic pressure to try and adjust my descent. So that I do, I do want to eventually put this thing down on the runway. It would be nice, it would be a nice change of pace. So you can see here that I am in the high atmosphere and I have, I've adjusted the roll just a bit and I'm trying to push my trajectory northwards, but uh, the atmosphere is still pretty thin up here, so I'm not really having too much effect. So why don't we cut down a little bit lower into the atmosphere. And you can see the KSC, the KSC is uh, it's right up around here. So I'm not too far off. Oh, wait a minute, I got Waypoint Manager. No, that's not Waypoint Manager. Come on, Waypoint Manager, there we go. Okay, KSC, there we go. Turn it off. Okay, we are just under 100 kilometers away. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Definitely have my speed under control. Reentry was actually pretty easy. But, ooh, we are slowing. Let's balance this a little bit. It's a little front heavy. Pump out some monoprop. Yeah, that feels a little bit better. I like using monoprop. I always have multiple monoprop containers so I can pump the fuel, whatever the fuel happens to be in this case, monopropellant, back and forth to sort of balance the plane. 
seems to be all right, but we are losing fuel fast, so I need to keep it sort of very close to the prograde vector. Not losing fuel, I'm sorry, losing speed. That's what I mean. I think this is such a light vehicle. Now I could easily, as you can tell, ditch it in the water. I mean, the ocean's right there. I'm kind of following the coastline right now, but I really would, even if I'm not going to make it to the runway, and as of right now, I'm starting to have my doubts whether I'm going to make it to the runway because uh, I think I'm going a little bit too slow to make it there. Um, I at least want to land on the ground. And as I was afraid of, <laughs> I wasn't going to make it to the Kerbal Space Center. So I'm going for this sort of brown strip. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, kind of looks like maybe it's dry, dry, short grass. Uh, it's kind of runway-like, I suppose, so that's what I'm going to go for. And uh, I got two more Dream Chasers, again, connect, er, docked with uh, Kerbin Station. One of those, one day, I'm going to put on the runway. I'm getting closer and closer to it, at least. But anyway, here we are, we're coming in, and I'm keeping it sort of on the prograde vector, trying to keep my speed up as best as I can and then just sort of flaring up just as we sort of get close here to the very very bottom so we're about a hundred meters from the surface now you can see the lights the landing lights are reflecting off the ground and there we go flare up a little bit slow down and you can see the shadow and the, oh geez, okay <laughs> We're good. We're good. And there we are. We've got Gilly there on the surface. We'll count this as a win. And with that accomplished, we actually have, well, a bit of an important event happening in the Vehicle Assembly Building. This is Moho 2, and I guess one of the things about it that is new is the lifter. This is my first lifter featuring 3.75 meter parts. Uh, I've had these unlocked for a little while, but I've been reluctant to use them because I want to get out all of these vessels uh, in a minimum amount of time, but I could resist no longer. And as I push this out into the building queue, I'll talk about the other significant thing. This is the last of the vessels that is on its way out to, well, in this case, MOHO or to EVE or to any interplanetary thing. It's going to be a while before I have another interplanetary window coming up. Okay, so let's open up Kerbal Construction Time and we'll push this up. Ooh, that's going to take about 20 days. That's going to be really close to when the launch window actually is. So let's uh, speed up production a little bit. We can do a speed up production by 10%. By pressing the button here, each time you press this, it costs you 36,747 curb bucks. But uh, yeah, I do want to sort of push it up. While I'm doing this, you can also see the other vessels that are coming up. You can see the, the Kegel 7. The Kegel 7 is a lander uh, for going to Gilly for our EVE mission. We have the propulsion module for our EVE mission, and we also have EVE 1 which is a collection of probes, very similar to MOHO 2, also a collection of probes and landers. And all of those are actually remarkably similar to the Drez 1 that you saw uh, several episodes, well, a few episodes ago you saw the Drez 1. But that's going to clear it up. So as these things get finished off, I will be replacing them with uh, vessels, new vessels, new technology being used that I've unlocked to be used in and around the Kerbin system. So we should be seeing some new vessels coming up over the next few episodes. But anyway, that's going to take 14 and a half days now to build. But, uh, so that's better. It should be comfortably ahead of my window, but you can also see that I'm only down to 67,943 uh, curb bucks left. So let's see what contracts we have here. I could pick up a whole stack of level ones. I got one more level two slot available and two level threes. Unfortunately, there's only one level one mission available, and that is to plant another flag on the moon. 
So it does give me a 42,650 curb buck advance. And this is what I'm doing this for. I am really looking more at the advances than than anything else. I want to I want to generate some funds. And obviously that's easy enough. We'll be going back to the moon uh, probably before too long. So yeah, we'll definitely pick that one up. For the level two, I went with investigate a Mooner crash site. That kind of sounds like fun. Uh, there's no advance for it though, but uh, I don't know. I'm kind of curious about that. I want to see see what that puts. I, I've never been to that particular uh, Easter egg, so I want to kind of see what that's about. There is this communication satellite for every planet. It says launch two satellites that connect to all the planets. Oh, oh, so you can just put on like a whole stack of antennas, different antennas, and point one at each of the various planets. Yeah, I kind of want to do that anyway. I actually don't have a satellite that can reach out past Duna, so uh, and considering I do have things on their way out to Dres, maybe I should, that's something I want to do. And 283,500 Kerbuck Advance, excellent, oh, that's man. good. I'm eyeing the network <laughs> around Joule System. For its 202,549 curb buck advance. I mean, I won't be doing this anytime soon because I don't have a jewel a jewel window coming up very very soon. Uh, so let's see if there are any other level three contracts that will be finishing off soon. Okay, so taking a look here, I got the recover the D-class asteroid. Yeah, I've had that one for a while. It's a bit of a sore spot. <laughs> You might recall my uh, losing a D-class asteroid and losing the vessel that was carrying it uh, quite some time ago. So that, that contract is still going around, but there's not another D-class asteroid coming into the Kerbin system for about another 100 days. So that's not going to be done anytime soon, unless a new D-class asteroid suddenly shows up. You never know. I've got extract ore from the moon. That's on my list of things to do, but I still haven't even designed a ship for that, so that's not going to happen sometime soon. There's a recovered Gilly in her scrap. Well, I've got Gilly. I've used her for quite some time. You saw her earlier doing a mission. But then scrap, her scrap, this mission's not done because her scrap is still at Kerbin Station. And that is on my list, one of my priorities to get that done. And I have a Mark III space shuttle that the orbiter part has been built. Out of the space plane hangar, I just got to stack on some boosters, so that is high priority item that you should be seeing fairly soon. Oh, and I do have Recover Burke. Oh, that's a level 3. Geez, I wouldn't have expected that to be a level 3 contract. Uh, Burke, of course, is back at Minmus Station. We picked him up, but to finish the contract, of course, I have to get him back to Kerbin. Maybe I should get that crew back to Kerbin sooner rather than later so yeah what i decided to do is to pick up that jewel communication system contract uh there now i got 596,633 curb bucks that will make me a bit more flush to build some more vessels but uh i had best get myself out to minmus and start thinking about getting these folks back home Okay, so uh, let's take a look at what our orbit is like. And, ugh. Ooh, ideally you would love to have the plane of this polar orbit be parallel with the direction that Minmus is moving in its orbit, but, yeah, this is, this is pretty bad. This is about as bad as it could get. And uh, it's going to be several days until these orbits line up right. Well, forget it. I want to go now. So let's let's just undock anyway. Okay, so that one. There we go. Undock. Okay. All right, let's toggle on the torque in the capsule here. All right, and back away a little bit from the station. And let's just check the resources. I had filled this all up I just want to make sure yeah we're good okay we'll put on the main reaction wheels too and now that we got shell cal into the laboratory why don't we start up our research and oh wait science shoot <laughs> oh, I never got the science out of the Kegel 3 oh that would have been embarrassing come on shell cal let's get back there I believe all the science is still stored in here in the uh, landing capsule. Yep, let's take that science. Oh my gosh. And 
Oh, there's still science in the equipment here too. Okay, collect that. Oh, wow. I'm glad I remembered to do that. But uh, once that was all collected, we got back into, got Shell Cal back into the crime one, and then it was time to start thinking about our plan out of here. And my first thought was, let's just see what it would cost to just do the inclination change I need to do sort of right here at this 50 kilometer altitude. But I could see pretty quickly that this was getting too expensive. I could likely just burn straight out of here for what this is adding up to. So I thought I'd try something a little bit different. Um, let's just start pushing out our apoapsis for a bit. I don't want to make it too far away. Okay, there. The apoapsis is now about three hours away. I don't want to go any further than that. And then we'll make the inclination change out here. While at the same time, bringing my periapsis in close to minmus. And then, shortly before periapsis, we'll, we'll make our actual ejection burn. So this will be the third burn in all of this process. And then we'll go out, you know, view it from Kerbin in map view. And uh, we want to get the inclination of our orbit relative to Kerbin as low as we can and get our periapsis, you know, well into the atmosphere, about 45 kilometers or so. And seeing what gets the periapsis and inclination the lowest helps kind of zero in the timing of this final burn. And of course, it's going to take a little bit of playing around, but in the end, I got what I wanted here. So uh, this third burn here, our ejection burn is about 115 meters per second. The next one here is 55 meters per second. And then our first burn add that in there, is 33 meters per second. All that adds up to 203 meters per second. That ain't bad, given the god-awful orbit I'm in right now. So uh, let's do this thing. So I've obviously time warped over to that first burn, and we're just about ready to go. Let's go, and oh my gosh, my engines are activated. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, they're off, and of course this is just a little burn to push up our apoapsis so we can make that inclination change more cheaply. And then it's going to be a three hour trip out there to make the inclination change and to get our periapsis down nice and low to minimus. But before we get to the burn, I just want to point out, Happy New Year! Yes, it has now been an entire year. Kerbin has made one entire trip around the sun since I started this little series of videos. So one game year and it's been pretty close to a year and a half I think in real time. I think I'm going slower in real time than I am in Kerbin time, but that's okay. So we'll just finish off this inclination change. I'm just gonna wait for the periapsis to pop up there. There we go. And it was a little over two hours later, we are down at periapsis getting ready to do this final escape burn. All right, let's get out of here. And I'll just say while I'm burning here that after each of the two previous burns, I would have had to tweak the maneuver nodes, but I think that kind of is to be expected. Maybe goes without saying. Okay, we are coming to the tail end of this. Excellent. Let's get rid of the node. We'll pop out to map view and take a look at this from Kerbin and see what our approach is going to be like. Let's zoom in here a little bit. Take a look at our periapsis of 27 kilometers. We'll use RCS to sort of just back off a little bit. Our inclination definitely looks all right. Okay, it's about 44. 43 and a half kilometers. That looks pretty good. And as these folks are time warping their way out of here on their way back to Kerbin, I think we'll be drawing this episode to a close. I thank you for watching and I hope to see you again next time.